I'm sure you've heard of anorexia nervosa, but can you really define it? Hello, my name is Stephanie. I am a therapist on Long Island, New York that specializes in the treatment of eating disorders and body image issues. If you found this video helpful at the end or informative, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're interested in learning more about eating disorders, eating issues, body image issues, general mental health and well-being, and therapeutic tools, please subscribe to my channel and I hope you'll find it helpful. So today I wanted to talk more about uh, eating disorders, more particularly, more specifically, anorexia nervosa. Now, the most important part here is figuring out what is anorexia. The problem is in our culture that we have a very uh, big misunderstanding and there's a lot of misinformation given to us about eating disorders throughout the schooling system, throughout just society in general. And this is very dangerous. So this is really dangerous for two big reasons. One is it really holds us back from being able to recognize an eating disorder or specifically in this video, anorexia. It makes it very difficult to spot it if we are not understanding exactly what it is. So if you're a teacher or your family member or whatever it is and you think that someone um, that you love may be struggling uh, or maybe you don't realize that someone that you love is struggling because of the misinformation you've been given all your life about these eating disorders. So one, it's about the recognition and knowing exactly what to look for when it comes to um, recognizing an eating disorder. Now the other part is, uh, of it is recognizing within your own self if you have an eating disorder. Again, more specifically anorexia for purposes of this video. When you don't know exactly what it entails and what anorexia is and when you're misinformed about what it is, you're not able to see that you have a problem and then what the problem is with that is that you're no longer or you're not going to get the help that you need at the time that you need it. The thing is, is there's a lot of research that supports that the earlier an eating disorder is caught and treated, the better the prognosis, usually meaning less treatment, um, usually less uh, severe, less intense, I'm sorry, in tre treatment. So you're more likely to be able to recover in an outpatient setting as opposed to an inpatient setting, which is a load of money for one, and two, a lot of time. And that might mean that you have to leave school or leave work or whatever um, your life is at this point. Um, so it's really important for any eating disorder to catch it as early as possible because recovery is going to be much better for you. Uh, at least a lot of research will support that and I can vouch for that, um, that it's going to help you in recovery and get recovered faster. So as I said, number two is recognizing an eating disorder within oneself. And if you don't recognize it, not only are you not getting the help, you might not even realize that if you do have this issue, you might not realize how severe it is. And you might write it off that it's just, you know, it's a normal diet or whatever it is when it's not. And again, that is a mistake uh, from our culture. That's because of misinformation we're given from our culture, our society, or, and our education system. Now let's get into it. What exactly is anorexia? So let's talk about what it's not. And this is going to be really important in debunking what the information we're given to us um, in our culture. So number one, a lot of people feel that in order to have anorexia, you must be underweight. That is not true. It used to be true according to our prior diagnostic and statistical manual, but I will show you. I have here the newest and the um, brightest, I guess you could say, diagnostic and statistical manual. This is number five. So this is a handy dandy um, book for any type of mental disorder that's known at this point that will be diagnosed right in here. So if you're looking in here and for anorexia, you're going to see that the criteria for having a, a significantly low weight is actually not there. You will see some terms about the significantly low weight, but you will see, um, it, it's kind of confusing when you read it, but you will see that you can actually have a diagnosis of anorexia uh, without meeting a certain body weight. You might actually be surprised to know that many people who are diagnosed with anorexia do not meet um, the lowest BMIs or severely underweight. Um, and there could be a lot of uh, health issues that arise before you even get to that point. In fact, it's very possible for you to um, be overweight 
clinically um, and actually have anorexia. So let's just get that out of your head. Do not feel that if you are struggling with an eating disorder with anorexia that you don't have it because you are um, you're not underweight or you don't look a certain way. That is misinformation from our culture. Essentially, get it out of your head that weight is a criteria for you to be diagnosed with anorexia. That is untrue. It is a message solely delivered from our culture at this point. Another big misconception, number two, is that a person who has anorexia does not eat and they starve themselves. That, again, is not true. Starvation, it's, it is subjective if you're thinking about it, that it could mean that you are having a very limited intake to, of um, calories that is not enough for what you really need. Um, but a lot of people interpret starvation as you don't eat, you never eat. And that is simply not true. So if you are struggling with any sort of eating issue and you feel that you don't have anorexia because you are not starving yourself completely, again, that is untrue. You may still meet the criteria for having anorexia um, and that is just something that's holding you back and that is going to be your eating disorder holding you back by thinking that you're not sick enough. That's a big thing that people who are struggling with anorexia or really any eating disorder um, will feel that they're not sick enough because either they they do not meet a certain body weight a criteria that they think is a criteria or they are not starving themselves completely but really what anorexia is it's a severe limitation of um, a severe restriction rather of the intake of calories so again it's just eating below the amount more regularly than not um, below the amount of calories that you need for survival and optimal functioning Number three, another thing that may confuse people is when they have behaviors that don't look like the typical anorexic. Again, delivered by society is that there's just starvation. That's all you do and you're compuls compulsively exercising and this and that. You may see that there is a lot of exercise, um, but you may also see that you don't have that. Um, but you also might see episodes of binging and purging. Now, a lot of people... Um, associate those behaviors with bulimia and that could be the diagnosis but when you are restricting more often than not and there are some sporadic episodes of binging and purging then that would be more under the criteria for anorexia. A big thing that I need to address in this video is this misconception of health when you get a blood test blood panel from a doctor and everything comes out fine this can be incredibly misleading. And why is that? So our blood is pretty cool. What it does is it tries to maintain homeostasis. And what that means is really it uh, tries to achieve balance within itself. So it tries to do whatever it can to have everything in it that it's supposed to have in, in the amounts that it's supposed to have. Um, so what happens is that if you're not nourishing your body properly, your blood is no longer getting the nutrients from the food that you are consuming, which is typically where it's going to get its nutrients from. So where does it go? It goes to other sources of your body to get those nutrients for itself. Um, so it may be taking from the muscles, it may be taking from bones, and it might be taking from deposits on your body that are not meant to be in the blood. It's meant to be in that part of the body. Uh, now... What happens is a lot of people will come into my office like, you know, I know I, I think I have an issue, but I'm not that bad because uh, my blood tests are coming out fine. And it just, it could very well be that there's nothing that has impacted your, um, your health just yet, but you may also have a lot of health issues that you're not even noticing. So you may be seeing that you are, um, losing bone density and unless you take further testing and unless a doctor recognizes what is going on and does recommend further testing, you're not seeing that you may be having more brittle bones and that could set you up for early onset osteoporosis and osteopenia and it's something that you don't want and it can also set you up for the future, let's say, if you don't have it Im immediately affecting you within the next few years, uh, the longer you go without having, um, without um, your bone density growing as it normally should or maintaining as it normally should. Um, you could be showing signs of osteoporosis much earlier on um, than you should. 
then really what I want you to take from that is that do not take your results from a blood panel and write off that everything's okay. In fact, when it comes to anorexia, this disorder specifically, it's very possible, and this is very scary, but it's very true, um, that it's very possible that your blood can show up absolutely fine until the day that you die from your disorder. Uh, and that is a very scary thought, I know, but it's something that is, it's a very serious disorder, so you really need to be getting help as soon as possible. A lot of people may also feel that when someone develops some sort of mental health issue, they will see it behaviorally or they'll see their life starting to slip and slide and all that stuff. When it comes to anorexia, normally you don't. I'm not saying that you never do, but it takes a while. Normally, um, the, if they're getting good grades in school or if you're getting good grades in school, you'll maintain that um, your room or your house is still very orderly if you are an organized, orderly person. Um, you will usually see that a lot of that is maintained. That doesn't say that you won't see behavioral changes. You might see someone who is originally very outgoing start to withdraw. You might see exceptional people pleasing type of um, type of mentality or type of behaviors which is a big thing that sometimes comes with anorexia. You may see very perfect uh, perfectionistic type of behaviors. You might see very rigid behaviors. So you usually will see those types of things develop. Again, it's different for everyone, uh, but those are some of the major things that I would suggest looking out for. I know I put a lot in this video, and this is really just a recap. All of these video, all of this, um, these things that I said in this video, they can each be. Uh, a whole topic, a whole series in and of itself. Um, and I probably will end up posting more in depth about each one of these uh, as I do or as I will in a lot of other videos that I'm explaining and I'm kind of going broadly over everything. But this is just some things that's going to help you to recognize that anorexia is painted very differently in society than uh, how it actually is and how it actually plays out. Um, and it's really something important to recognize so that you can um, recognize it in other people and you can recognize it within yourself. What I hope that you get from this video is to know that what anorexia really is so that you can be more open-minded to when you see it um, and not have this um, misconception walking around um, the world with this mis misconception. But please do not take this video as a diagnosis by any means. I just want you to open up your eyes as to whether or not you may have um, an eating issue, whether you have anorexia or whatever it might be. The only true diagnosis that you can get is when you go to an eating disorder therapist and they're going to be able to help you decipher what's going on and will be able to diagnose you. And I'm going to leave a link in the video, uh, in the description below about, um, to, to a video, I'm sorry, that talks more about getting the appropriate help for an eating disorder since it is incredibly important to make sure that you're getting help from an eating disorder therapist. And I'm also going to leave a link in the description below some barriers to recovery um, because misinformation in our culture is a big part of what may be holding people back from getting the right help that they need. Um, yeah, so I hope that you enjoyed this video or if you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel. If you learned anything from this video, if there's something that changed your mind or something that opened up your mind uh, to something that you didn't know before, please leave it in the comments below and I could talk more about it in a future video. Also, I want to put out there that I'm accepting requests for videos for the holiday season. Um, typically, when it comes to eating disorders, uh, the holiday season can be very uh, anxiety provoking and a lot of negative things may come up around that time. So comment down below what you're concerned about if it's an eating disorder disorder um, type of topic or eating issue or body image or whatever it might be, leave a comment and I will do my best to make a video more catered toward that. Um, and I also have a blog. I will leave a link in the description below. Feel free to check it out. And I hope that you found these uh, this video helpful. And I hope to see you in my next video. Have a great one. Bye.